Hello everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. I hope you are enjoying Google Cloud Next. Welcome to this session on how to lower your cost on Google Cloud. We have a panel of experts today to talk about top leading practices for cloud cost optimization. My name is Pathik and I lead cost optimization in Cloud FinOps digital transformation practice. Joining me here is Yasmin, who is product lead for cost optimization on Google Cloud Compute Services, and Courtney, who leads Cloud FinOps at General Mills. We have a packed agenda today to talk about real world stories on how General Mills approached the discipline of cost savings and accelerated their adoption of Cloud FinOps. Next up, we will touch upon the broader landscape and top ways other cloud customers are optimizing their spend. And finally, wrap up the session with the newest features and announcements coming out at this next. Before we dive right in, Courtney, can you tell us a bit more about General Mills? Absolutely, Pathak. General Mills has been making world food the world loves for more than 150 years. The brands you see down in the corner are just a handful that feed families across the globe each and every day, and our team of 36,000 plus employees are passionate about making food the world loves. This mission comes to life in everything we do, including our cloud transformation journey. We view cloud as a key business accelerator. It's a way that we're able to enhance operational insights by connecting data both internally as well as externally to build more personalized products, make faster supply and demand planning decisions, and provide better service and reliabilities to our customers and partners. It's also driving efficiencies for us, creating a scalable IT platform at a competitive cost, and unlocking new services and offerings, allowing us to utilize cloud native capabilities to build new digital services and offerings in an agile manner. The graphs below help to really highlight the journey General Mills has been on. As you can see, we started in 2020 with just 5% of our footprint on cloud. We're now around 35% and anticipating by 2024 that we'll be at 65%. So we're really in that sharp growth curve right now. And it's been critical as our cloud spending is growing to grow our governance right along with it. And FinOps is a critical part of that growth. The FinOps team is focused on ensuring we help to drive waste out of our cloud usage at General Mills. It's great to see, Courtney, that you have a team focused on this. So speaking of efficiencies, what has been your biggest driver of cost optimization and efficiency? Yeah, for us, that's really been committed use discounts, Yasmin. And that's CUDs for short. So we're migrating our ERP systems to GCP, and these CUDs have allowed us to optimize our data center bill by more than 50%. Resource-based CUDs are a really good fit for optimization um, on our machines because we know they need to run 24-7 in order to serve our global business. Once we were confident in the machine sizes, putting the long-term CUDs on these stable workloads has been a big cost savings win. Committing to resources for a long time horizon, though, isn't a decision that we make lightly. We have a robust governance process around these commitments with cross-functional stakeholders weighing in and a formal purchase approval process before we buy. In addition to CUDs, we're also starting to dip our toes into another rate optimization tool, which is BigQuery slots reservations. And these are really good on our analytic workloads. We're taking advantage of this opportunity for our non-prod projects today and excited to expand into our prod projects in the near future. While CUDs and slots are a great optimization fit for several of our projects, they aren't right for all and we are striving for flexibility. I was excited to hear that the Google team has a new type of CUD that's going to be available soon that's even more flexible. That is right, Courtney. We are so happy to announce the general availability of a new type of a spend-based commitment for a compute engine called Flexible Committed Use Discounts, or Flex CUDs for short. Flex CUDs will help customers save up to 46% off the on-demand GCE VM pricing in exchange for one or three year commitments. Flex CUDs are ideal for predictable spend across GCE, JKE, and Dataproc. 
those discounts will just automatically apply to most general purpose and compute optimized VMs in any region, any machine family, any operating system. So there's a great deal of flexibility here. And it also works across all projects within the billing account. So whether your workload requirements change, you expand geographically, or you want to upgrade to the latest and greatest VM we have, FlexCuds will just provide you a simple and easy way to save money and manage spend. So Courtney, you've told us about like how rate optimization has been very effective at General Mills for saving costs using CUDs or using BigQuery slots. I'm curious, like what other ways have you been saving costs around? Yeah, absolutely. One of the other really critical things that we've done is start to look at cost controls, Yasmin. And it is, of course, easy to get excited about lowering the bill and, you know, put some spend mitigation on the back burner. Um, but unfortunately, we learned this one the hard way with one project accruing over $80,000 of anomalous charges um, due to a lack of partitioning and clustering of a BigQuery data set. The quotas that we now have in place effectively limit the amount both individuals and a team can spend in a rolling 24-hour basis. Most of our projects have a $1,000 limit, so obviously a much lower ceiling if you do have that oops moment. Uh, my advice is really to teams prioritize quotas now, prioritize cost controls. Don't wait for you know a costly financial mistake. Thanks for sharing that lessons learned. Um, and, and I love how you've strengthened the overall process um, while going through this. We've been seeing some of our customers create a cookbook of recipes such as these cost control policies and design an end-to-end -end automation workflow to handle these ops moments, like this oops moments at scale. Since we are on the topic of BigQuery um, and our customers love using BigQuery, um, I'm curious to see if you find any other opportunities in your data analytics workload. Yeah, absolutely, Patik. We are also heavy BigQuery users at General Mills. Um, and one area where we have found a lot of savings on BigQuery is through optimizing our data backup costs. We started by digging into policy requirements and realized that we had been capturing a snapshot each day of the month, so you know, usually around 30. Uh, by examining the policy as well as our business need, we were able to move to just a rolling seven-day backup and then some weekly snapshots. This allowed us to drop nearly 20 additional backup copies per month that we had been using. Uh, and the team has really been awesome. They've taken it even one step further here and they're currently deploying the table snapshot functionality, which allows us to just capture that incremental data that has changed and further reduce costs. This work also has the added benefit of providing more transparency to the team. So we're moving from one central backup project to having that distributed across all the individual consuming projects. It's been a really big win that way in terms of transparency and really fabulous work by our overall engineering team to bring this to life. And it's hard to argue with savings of over 70%. So really fabulous work by the team. I, I love the numbers you just shared and kudos to the team for achieving these impressive results. Let me throw a curveball question here. Um, we have been increasingly seeing customers use cloud native architectures and serverless services just play a very critical role there. Have General Mills adopted serverless? Any thoughts you would like to share us there? Yeah, absolutely. So there's been a couple of things that I, I think we can share on this, a couple quick examples of teams that through a willingness to really explore other tools to still meet their business deliverables, have been able to achieve some significant cost savings, Patik. Um, two quick examples here. The first is the use of BI Engine to redirect the majority of one of our project team's report query usage to BI Engine from BigQuery database processing. The BI Engine provides a fixed monthly cost that was 80% less than running the same processing through BigQuery. We have another group who's also been uh, working with the new Composer functionality that has auto-scaling built in. And this team, through that auto-scaling functionality, has been able to drive 60% out of our Composer costs as well. So another really significant win for the team um, through that willingness to think about trade-offs in different services that can still meet our business need. 60%, 80%, those are like great success stories, wow. I love that you're using all of these techniques to ensure that you're spending your money on the right resources like to achieve the right business results. 
Absolutely, Yasmin, and the team has done some really impressive work, but we are still, I would say, relatively early in our cloud journey. So I'd love to hear from you. What are other teams doing? What are some other best practices out there? Absolutely. So we see really like a whole spectrum of cost optimization strategies for customer with varying levels of effort and savings. What you see here on the screen are the top 10 ways our customers have been leveraging to lower their cloud costs. Depending upon the use case, some strategies are going to provide highest value with minimal effort. Think about like purchasing flexible committed use discounts or the regular committed use discounts, reserving big query slots. So similar to what you've been doing at General Mills really. There are other strategies that can be employed during the architecture and design phase so think like before even deploying your workload to the cloud, like auto scaling, choosing the custom VMs and to right size your machines based on your workload requirements. Other strategies will work great if you are into automation, like turning off idle resources, right sizing your VMs post deployment, and also setting up appropriate storage lifecycle management policies. So Pati, can you tell us like what else have you been seeing? Yeah, I think I think you covered a broad spectrum. Um, what we've been seeing is like a couple examples comes to my mind. Um, you know, we've been seeing customers who use fault tolerant workloads. Uh, they tend to leverage spot VMs, which will help them save up to ninety one percent in uh, cost savings for compute. Um, and just like General Mills, we have been increasingly seeing our Google Cloud customers leverage um, Google managed services, serverless services like BigQuery, Spanner, Bigtable, Cloud SQL, and more to not only reduce the total cost of ownership, but also instill and propel that developer productivity and go-to-market, which is so much needed in this dynamic environment. Talking about more, cost, uh, more ways to save cost, Yasmin, um, can you please tell us you know, what's coming out? Oh, yeah, so that's, that's really exciting. That's the fun part. So I'm gonna share with you like some products that are we are releasing and announcing this next. So starting with products that fit under the category of cost visibility and insights, we are introducing a new cost modeling service to help customers model out and forecast their cost for their upcoming workloads before deploying it to the cloud. We're also enhancing our cost anomalies detection capabilities to provide proactive monitoring and governance to inform customers about any out of the ordinary spending to avoid those like oops moments you've talked about, Courtney. We're also introducing a new Google Cloud Storage Insights service that allows customers to monitor the object age and size trends to forecast and control cost. And finally, using BigQuery partitioning and clustering recommender this can help customers save workload execution costs by providing physical design optimization recommendations that, are, that customers can apply to their tables. So Pati, can you walk us through the new launches in the cost optimization and recommendation section? A absolutely. Uh, on the cost optimization and recommendation side, we are introducing AutoClass, a new managed service for cloud storage. If I'm allowed to pick my favorite, it would be this one. Mm -hmm. Right. Auto class is a simple bucket level setting that automates the lifecycle management of objects. It greatly reduces the storage cost by automatically migrating objects between warmer storage and colder storage with the most favorable pricing. Next up is Cloud Spanner. And this team had a lot of great announcements this year, starting with granular instance sizing, which allows customers to provision one tenth of the size of current node at one-tenth of the price. Now this is game changer, not only for the bigger teams, but also for the smaller teams to unlock creativity, especially those who are tight on budget. Next in Spanner is increased storage capacity per node, which helps you achieve up to 50% savings on compute cost for storage intensive workloads. And as part of our growing portfolio of committed use discounts, Cloud Spanner now supports CURD for one year and three year commitments, which help you save up to 40% compared to on demand rates. Finally, in this category, we are excited to introduce Google Cloud Hyperdisk, the next generation of block storage. This is cool. Cloud Hyperdisk decouples the block storage performance from the VM, so you can tune your storage performance to your workload needs to achieve higher IOPS and throughput performance independent of virtual machines. Cloud Hyperdisk can deliver up to 60% better total cost of ownership than the previous generations of persistent disks. 
I am looking forward to see the reaction and feedback from General Mills and our customers as they adopt these exciting features. That's right, we're very excited here. That's a lot of great features coming out on top of our already expensive portfolio of ways to save costs. So, Pati, can you like walk us through how can we make this like an easy journey for our customers so it doesn't seem so daunting? Yeah, absolutely. And this is where I'm super excited to share like how Active Assist brings the data, intelligence, and machine learning to not only proactively optimize cost, but also improve the availability, the performance, the reliability, as well as go green through sustainability. To showcase how broad and deep the portfolio is, you can see that Active Assist runs through nearly all of Google Cloud. Focusing on cost intelligence, Active Assist does a lot of heavy lifting, understanding your usage patterns, and assessing the impact of billing to provide you with the most optimal cost recommendations. For example, based on your workload usage, Active Assist can provide you easy to understand and actionable committed use discounts recommendations and BigQuery slots recommendations. Active Assist will also surface idle cloud resources, otherwise known as cloud-based, and right-sizing opportunities for virtual machines, databases, and more to further lower your cost. Now, these recommendations are available through console, API, and BigQuery export. We have seen customers use this for automation use cases. The Active Assist team has been hard at work listening to our customers rolling out these relevant features, I highly encourage you to check out our public documentation to keep up to date on this. Now, before we wrap up this session, Courtney, any final piece of advice that you would like to share with us on driving cost optimization at scale? Yeah, absolutely, Patik. Thank you for that. And it's been really great to share some of the early wins that General Mills is seeing and excited about all the new features that you and Yasmin covered that are coming out. But I do want to just take a moment to really emphasize the importance of culture. And so as important as it is to have real-time visibility and reporting, to have this central FinOps team that also is going to be focused on best practice sharing and, and optimization practices across organizations, it's really all of the individual users that come together that make the difference on whether or not an organization will be successful or not. So when we're looking at this, you know, one of the critical things to think about is how can you incentivize the organization to really adopt FinOps? And one thing that we've done around that that's been successful is a little bit silly, but each month we recognize a FinOps all-star. And this all-star could either be an individual or a small team uh, that's done some great work driving waste out of their cloud usage. And we reward them with a highly coveted Yeti mug um, and put their faces, of course, on a cheesy FinOps all-star. Uh, but it's been such a fun way to really incentivize those new habits and just make it an embedded part of the General Mills culture. Agree. Everyone has a responsibility to play here. And I love how you've instilled that cost-conscious behavior through gamification. Speaking of gamification, if you are a developer, don't forget to check out the Developer Zone where we have immersive experience for you to engage with the community, complete the challenges, and earn badges that will stay on your developer profile forever. I would like to thank Yasmin and Courtney for sharing your expertise, and I hope you have enjoyed this session. Thank you for listening to us, and I hope you have fun learning more at this Google Cloud Next.